Detective Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime drama film called, Spring Breakers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Candy, Britt, and Cotty are college girls who love to party, drink, and do drugs. For them, it's all about having fun that even in class, they discreetly talk about the things they want to do instead of focusing on the professor's lecture. Meanwhile, their other friend, Faith, likes attending religious youth groups. One day, after her youth group session, Faith talks to her other two friends, Vess and Forrest, about going to Florida. They ask Faith who she's going with, and when Faith tells them that she's going with Candy, Britt and Cotty, Vess warns her to be careful. Faith asks them why, and they retort that those girls are scary, especially Britt and Candy. They say that those two are just so cold and that they act like they have demon blood in their system. Forrest even goes as far as to call them evil, adding that they give her goosebumps. But Faith disagrees with them. She's known those girls since kindergarten, and she thinks that they're sweet. Forrest, however, begs to differ, saying that Candy and Britt don't seem right. The two girls tease Faith about praying in Florida since she's going to be with them. Once she's in her dorm room, Faith contemplates Bess and Forrest's advice. At another party, Candy, Britt, and Cotty drink and smoke once again. The following morning, the three girls go to Faith's dorm, wasted and barefooted, then wake up Faith to ask for her money. Being the good friend that she is, Faith gives them what she has. On the bathroom floor, the four girls count their cash and learn that they only have $325. They are all disappointed that they are short on money, so Faith offers them her remaining $20, but the other three girls won't let her. Faith says that she's so tired of seeing the same things every day and that everyone in there is miserable because they keep seeing the same things and waking up in the same bed, in the same house. She says she doesn't want to be like those miserable people and that she wants to get out of there. For her, it's more than just spring break, it's a chance for them to see something different. The girls continue talking about how everyone has already left while they're still stuck there. Feeling hopeless, they say they've been saving that money since the beginning of the year, but Britt assures them that they'll figure out how to get more. When Faith asks Britt how she's planning to do that, Britt says she doesn't know, but what she does know is that she won't sit there another day, and they won't be miserable anymore. One day, Candy and Britt talk to Cotty, asking her if they can borrow her car. Cotty says no since it's in the shop, then asks them why they need her car. Candy doesn't answer her, and instead, she asks if she knows anyone who has a car that they can use. Cotty accuses them of being shady, then adds that everyone is pretty much gone. As the three of them smoke and do drugs, Candy asks Cotty if she knows where their professor Stevens hides his car. Luckily, Cotty knows where he hides his key and she tries to ask them what they're up to. Still, Candy only assures her not to worry. After getting high, the three girls remind each other to act like how people in movies do and not be scared before stealing their professor's car. With ski masks over their heads, a hammer, and realistic toy guns, Candy and Britt rob a small restaurant while Cotty stays behind the wheels in case they need to escape quickly. As Cotty slowly drives around the restaurant, she sees Candy and Britt smash plates and threaten the customers. After robbing the place, Candy and Britt come out, and the three of them speed away, screaming at the top of their lungs and cheering before they finally dump the car and burn it. Back at the dorm, Faith asks Candy, Britt, and Cotty where they got that huge amount of money, and Candy confesses that they robbed the chicken shack with squirt guns. The three girls are so proud of what they did, but Faith is a little reluctant and uncomfortable with it. Eventually, they're able to get Faith to celebrate and smoke with them. In Florida, the four girls have fun by going to beach parties, smoking, drinking, and riding scooters. Faith calls her grandmother and tells her all about their spring break adventure, saying she can't believe how many friends they've made. Faith says everyone is so sweet and friendly and that it feels good to get a break from reality for a little while. Faith tells her grandmother that she wants to remember that trip and that she wants to go back there with her the following year. After attending a party, the girls go back to their hotel using their scooters. Faith, Candy, and Britt swim in the pool and talk about how they don't want to go back while Cotty parties and drinks with multiple guys. In the pool, Faith tells the girls that it would be really cool if they could freeze life, and they agree with her. Meanwhile, Cotty continues partying with men and gets so drunk that she removes her bikini top just to tease them. Faith calls her grandmother again to tell her what they're doing, then she calls her mom next, apologizing for not informing her that she's coming to Florida. At the party, everything goes crazy, and Cotty starts making out with one of the guys. After all that, the girls go to a convenience store to continue their drinking and playing around. Candy, Britt, and Cotty then recall the night of the robbery, describing to Faith in detail what exactly they did. This makes her uncomfortable, especially with their crude demonstrations of what they did. 
Faith, however, remains quiet about it. The next day, they continue partying, and the girls keep having the time of their lives. What may look like complete debauchery to some is simply good fun for them. To Faith, she might have even found herself there, amidst the loud music, the dancing, touching, and cheering people, and all that ecstatic blur. Things take a sharp turn, however, when the cops bust one of their house parties. Faith keeps thinking that things weren't supposed to be that way, yet she and her friends were all cuffed and detained in a cell, still in their bikinis. The fun's gone, and they all spend the night there. After waiting in jail, the girls finally stand in front of a judge and are told that they won't be charged with narcotics possession since no drugs were actually found on them. Instead, they'll be issued with citations, and they have to pay their fines, else they'll spend two more days in county jail. Britt tries reasoning with the judge, saying that they don't have any money, but the judge simply tells them to find a way. Sitting at the back of the courtroom is Alien, a rapper who was at the first party they attended. He smiles at the sight and decides to bail them out. Alien picks them up as soon as they get out and introduces himself to them, saying that everyone can use some bailing out once in a while. The girls don't respond, but Alien ignores their seeming disinterest and continues his sweet talking, asking them to ride with him. When Brit asks where they're going, he says they can go wherever the girls want. Cotty is the first one to get in his car, and the others follow. Alien asks the girls if they've ever been arrested for anything before, and they tell him no. He teases them, asking if they used drugs at the party, and they claim that they did a little coke. This excites Alien, and he asks them if they met the twins at the party, but he then warns them to watch out for the two. Noticing that Faith isn't saying anything, Alien asks for her name, and when she tells him, Alien inquires if that means she has faith and believes in God. Faith says yes, prompting Alien to keep asking her if she likes to pray and if she prayed for her friends on that trip. Faith turns quiet again, and Alien proposes that he may be the answer to her prayer since he was there when they were in trouble. Alien doesn't stop talking and starts teasing them again, but about running out of cash this time. He tells the girls not to worry since he has a lot of money before assuring them that they'll be getting plenty, too. Alien then starts telling the girls his story, saying he grew up in that neighborhood. When Cotty asks what he does for a living, Alien answers that he's a hustler, meaning he's a drug and arms dealer and a rapper. He claims that many people know him and that he's done a lot of illegal activities around. The girls and Alien are playing billiards with his friends, when suddenly, Faith gets emotional. She bursts into tears, telling her friends that she doesn't feel comfortable being around those kinds of people and that she wants to go home. The girls try to calm her down, but she continues to cry, saying that going to jail and getting bailed out by a stranger isn't what she signed up for. Alien talks to her alone to ask her what's wrong. Faith says she wants to go home and that she doesn't want to be there, adding that this isn't the reason why they came to Florida. When Alien asks her what the reason is, Faith replies that she resents where they came from, so she thought that by being in Florida, they'd be free. Alien proceeds to ask her about what kind of fun she wants to have, and she simply tells him, not going to jail. But then, he reminds Faith that it was he who got them out of jail. Still, Faith remains wary of Alien's motives and tells him that he should leave them alone. Alien insists that he's just being nice to them, confessing that he likes her, but she can go home if she wants to. However, Alien warns her that she'll just be back where she started if she goes home. For the last time, Faith stresses that she wants to go home, and Alien tells her that she can, but her friends are staying with him. After their conversation, Faith begs her friends to go home with her, admitting that she has a feeling that something bad is about to happen. Ignoring her pleas, her friends just tease her and ask her to stay. Faith, however, is adamant about leaving, so she goes back home alone. Candy, Britt, and Cotty stay behind, and Alien charms them effortlessly. Alien takes them to his house, where the girls see all of his guns and money. He then brings them to a strip club owned by Big Arch, who, according to Alien, used to be his best friend. Alien says Big Arch and his men are the real deal, even describing them as murderers. In the club, Big Arch confronts Alien, saying he's got some nerve to be coming to his turf. Alien calmly tells Big Arch that he's only having fun, and they start to recall that one time when they went to the ocean. Alien says he taught him how to swim, and Big Arch curtly replies that he taught Alien everything he knows. The smile disappears from Alien's face, and he tells him that he's not denying it. Still, Big Arch is pissed at him, commenting about how Alien thinks he's a boss now just because he has his own operation. Alien asks his old friend if he'd rather he stay in his shadow forever, but Big Arch tells him up front that he wants him to disappear. Alien says he can handle anything since Big Arch made him, but Big Arch replies that just like he made Alien, he'll break him. Back at Alien's house, the man flaunts his guns to Candy and Brit while the two are preparing their drugs. 
Kati is asleep, but that doesn't stop Candy and Brit from having fun. Seeing that the girls are enjoying themselves, Alien asks them if they like his stuff, and they say yes. He then takes out a lot of cash and gives it to them before making out with the two. As Alien and Brit kiss, Candy takes one of his guns, and when Alien sees it, he warns Candy to be careful since it's loaded. Just like her friend, Brit also takes a gun and points it at Alien. The girls now have two guns pointed at him, and they order him to get down on his knees. Alien complies, and the girls ask him if he thinks he can just own them. They tell him to open his mouth, and when he does, Brit puts the barrel of her gun deep inside his mouth. Candy then says that since they have everything they need in the house, they don't need him anymore, and they could just kill him. Thinking that they're just playing around, Alien toys with the gun using his mouth and tells the girls that he just fell in love with them. Alien sweet talks Brit and Candy once again, crooning about how different they are from the others and that he knew they were special from the moment he saw them. He says he wants to make them happy and help them live life to the fullest. Alien then gives the three girls pink ski masks and arms them with shotguns. Before leaving the house, they see Alien playing the piano, so they ask him to play something inspiring for them. Alien obliges, and the girls start singing along with him. With the girls' help, Alien commits armed robberies. His acts have flown straight to Big Arch's radar, and he says Alien is taking away his daughter's food and needs. With that, Big Arch tells his men that they need to do something about it. Alien picks up the girls after a gig, and while in the car, Brit gives Alien the cash they've collected. As Alien drives, Big Arch and one of his goons suddenly show up to block his path. Alien asks Big Arch if he's following him, but he doesn't answer the question. Seeing that Candy, Brit, and Cotty are all looking at him, Big Arch threatens them, asking them if they want to die. He then tells Alien that he's been looking for him, then asks him if he's been hiding. He warns Alien to stay away from his streets, even talking about how he should kill him. But then, Big Arch says that he should just shoot Alien in the face. Just like that, he speeds away as his companion showers Alien and the girls with a rain of bullets. They all duck, but Cotty gets hit in the arm. Alien takes out the bullet from Cotty's arm, apologizing for what happened. He promises Cotty that they will get their revenge on Big Arch, but Cotty tells them that she wants to go home. Candy and Brit couldn't stop Cotty from going home, and the two of them stay behind. Alien, Candy, and Brit hook up in the pool, and when they have finally decided to get back at Big Arch, the three of them admit to each other that they're scared. Sometime in the future, Brit calls her mom and tells her that she wants to be better at school and life. Brit says she feels changed, for some reason, and that she wants to be a good girl from that moment on. Candy calls her mom, too. She lets her know that she's had so much fun during their spring break and that she's coming home, promising that she's going to do better than before. Back to the present, Alien, Candy, and Brit ride a speedboat to Big Arch's mansion. With their pink ski masks on and their guns on hand, the girls follow Alien as he enters Big Arch's property. His men, however, spot them immediately, and they shoot them, instantly killing Alien. Candy and Brit leave him, and as they continue their way inside the place, they start gunning down everyone they see. They find Big Arch in his bathtub, and without mercy, they shoot him. Using one of Big Arch's cars, the two girls head back home. Later on, Candy and Brit are seen kissing Alien's dead body. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.